Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. There is definitely a sense that even in an extremely fast-moving AI space, the last couple of months have seen another big phase up. And now we actually have some evidence that that's the case. On this week's earnings call, Google CEO Sundar Pichai revealed that the company is now processing 980 trillion monthly tokens across their products and APIs. And what makes that number impressive for more than just the fact that it's almost a quadrillion is how much it's grown since just May. Back at Google I.O. in May, they were processing 480 trillion tokens. That is 104% growth in just a couple of months. And one thing I think that's important to note about that is that a huge amount of that usage is, of course, people who are building other types of AI experiences, which means that presumably all of this use builds on itself and will move even faster going forward. Now, unsurprising, the entire big theme of Google's earnings call was AI. Although interestingly, it was a lot about analysts who were concerned with AI cannibalizing various parts of Google's business. Pichai said in no uncertain terms, though, AI is positively impacting every part of the business. He said that features like AI overviews and AI mode are performing well, and that despite analyst fears of AI disruption, Google search by itself is bringing in $54 billion and still rising. Indeed, revenue jumped 14% overall, reaching a $96.4 billion quarterly pace, which makes their $10 billion or 13% CapEx projection increase a little bit more tolerable to investors. Now, this was the first earnings call where we got solid user numbers for Google's AI search products. We also got on this call some pretty actually solid user numbers. Gemini app users have grown to 250 million active users, with daily requests increasing by 50% since Q1. And while they tried to position their CapEx expansion as just keeping up with demand, one Forrester analyst said, Google's hand is forced by OpenAI to spend tremendously on AI's infrastructure and applications. I don't know that I think that they're being quote-unquote forced in any way. I think that Google has for a very long time seen more or less its entire future in this AI space and has really hit its stride in the Gemini 2.5 era. More than 100% growth in token usage in just a couple of months tells a big part of the story right there. And speaking of OpenAI, Pichar actually kind of dropped a little bit of a bomb, disclosing a partnership with the company that had gone under the radar. He told investors, with respect to OpenAI, look, we are very excited to be partnering with them on Google Cloud. Google Cloud is an open platform, and we have a strong history of supporting great companies, startups, AI labs, etc. So super excited about our partnership there on the cloud side, and we look forward to investing more in that relationship and growing that. It turns out that OpenAI models had been quietly added to Google Cloud earlier this month, making them the third provider alongside Oracle and Microsoft Azure. Basically, when you're playing this big with this many product lines, you can't be anything other than frenemies. Speaking of earnings calls, Elon Musk was careful not to encourage discussion of an XAI investment during this week's Tesla earnings call. When asked about a potential XAI investment, he responded, shareholders are welcome to put forward any shareholder proposals that they'd like. Tesla's CFO added that this is, quote, not the forum to discuss the topic. Now, Musk has, of course, been winking at a Tesla deal recently, as XAI looks basically everywhere for investors. SpaceX has been tapped for $2 billion, and XAI is reportedly looking for another $5 billion in debt funding at the moment. Tesla has around $37 billion cash on hand, so could smooth over XAI's capital needs as they build out more compute. However, as Musk doesn't have a controlling stake in the company, he doesn't get to make that decision. So he's been calling on shareholders to put together a proposal. Earlier this month, he posted, It's not up to me. If it was up to me, Tesla would have invested in XAI long ago. We will have a shareholder vote on the matter. And yes, while it's not up to him, the seed has definitely been planted among the Tesla faithful. Lastly today, AI coding platform Lovable has become the fastest software startup ever to hit $100 million in revenue. Founded just eight months ago, Lovable has beaten out Cursor and Wiz. And of course, while their rival Replit also reached $100 million in ARR over that same time space, Replit had fought as a smaller startup for eight long years before becoming a overnight success. To many, Lovable is an iconic representation of what can be achieved with a lean team during the AI era. They have just 45 full-time employees and another 14 open positions, which makes for a pretty impressive revenue per employee ratio. They also seem to be monetizing customers extremely efficiently. Lovable claims 2.3 million active users, but only something like 180,000 paying customers, meaning that each customer is spending a good chunk of money, over $500 in annual revenue. Now, growth is apparently continuing to be incredibly strong. They've reported a $75 million run rate in June, meaning they've tacked on another 30% in a month. Alongside the announcement, they also introduced a new agent design intended to be much better at thinking and tool use. 
They said that the agent has 91% fewer errors, meaning that to quote CEO Anton Asika, it should feel like you're now working with a senior developer. Now, one thing that's been really interesting is that I've seen a few people shade this announcement either directly or surreptitiously. I've seen a lot of people say, use caveats like reportedly or supposedly when requoting this $100 million number. And I also saw this post from Greg Eisenberg that read, I think within the next 24 months, we're going to witness an AI company that was one of the fastest growing companies of all time and realize that revenue was fake. Not predicting who that is, just think it's inevitable. Now, if Greg isn't talking about Lovable, he certainly timed that tweet awkwardly given their announcement. I don't know, man. As a Lovable user, it's pretty easy for me to believe, given that about $99 million of those are probably mine. With that in mind, I will simply say congratulations. If you haven't tried Lovable yet, go check them out. But that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.